bless you right where you're set <laughs> always shall we pray father god the one who sits above the, the high skies and is seated in the royal places your eyes search the earth from one end to the other, seeking whom you may bless. Know this, Lord, today, yes. that those here gathered have come purposely to worship you in your high place. Our intention is to lift you high in our own esteem as God, as creator, as our redeemer, and our healer. Yes, Lord. Heavenly Father, you are indeed the God of heaven. Our songs today declare the blessings that even your name brings. Yes, Lord. 
They declare that you intend to bless us as your creation. Thank you, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be in a place that gives you honor as your creation. Today, Lord, as our pastor brings your words to us, may ears be open and our hearts as well, ready to receive from you what you intend us to have and to hold from here on. Help us, Lord, to be attentive today. Your word. For your presence deserves our attention. May glory and honor be yours. May your servants reflect your very personality to the ones that we meet on a daily basis. As we hug one another in a holy love, may we virtually hug those around us who don't know where the hug is coming from. We will give you the glory and the honor for every result. For we pray expecting things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Before we get into the message this morning, as you know, we've been having people come up and sharing their testimonies. And been trying to get this person to come up and share her testimony for a little bit. Right. But what a coinky dink, if you believe in coincidences, which I don't. Um, it just so happened to fall on today uh, that we're going to be having Sonia come up and share her testimony. But very interesting that God would orchestrate it, that the only way it would happen would be the first day that she was here leading worship. But I felt that was very, very fitting, not to highlight an individual, but for you to kind of get a little bit of a glimpse of maybe some of the things that we've seen. Because how many know God really doesn't care if you got a voice? What he cares is that you got the heart of worship. Amen. And but what we're blessed with with Sonia is she's got both. Yeah. She's got yeah. the heart and she's got the voice. Yeah. And um, but I want you to hear from her this morning a little bit of her testimony and where she's going. And it's just really interesting how all the songs and the sermon and everything have lined up this morning. She was sharing with me and I shared with her what I was talking about. I don't know, you might not even get a message this morning, you might get a condensed one, because it sounds like a lot of what she's going to share is probably what I, I had prepared this morning. Uh, but Sonia, if you'll come on up and just share with us right. about how you came to know the Lord, what God's done in your life since. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank so, you. <laughs> those of you who know me, I am going to apologize in advance because I am a weeper. And I don't know if I'll be able to control that this morning or not. And I'm always told, don't control it, because if that's the way the Lord wants to move, then that's the way the Lord wants to move. Let it flow. Um, my message this morning is based on blessings. Um, it is a huge part of my testimony. I am one of these people that were fortunate enough to be blessed from the beginning. Um, I grew up in a Christian household. Went to a Christian school for all my young years. And I live in a country when I was younger. You were free to believe. You were free to express your beliefs. There was no one hindering you or telling you you can't talk about that. So I had all the freedoms you could think of as a young Christian. Amen. Um, the first verse I want to share with you is Ephesians 1, 3 and 4. This verse states, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. Something I noticed about this verse when I was doing my testimony that I never noticed before is he says, 
He's blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. That's not just blessings from here. That's heavenly blessings. Amen. Try to wrap your brain around that as glorious as heaven is and as much as we try to picture what it would be like, he's giving us those blessings down here as well. And we have to remember that when things are difficult or we feel like we've lost our way or we feel like no matter how hard we try to get from point A to point B, we keep going backwards. We just have to keep on believing in him and believing in those blessings and knowing that even when times get tough, when we come out to the other side, we're going to go, wow. Um, it doesn't come without our part, though. And this is the part I had a hard time with as a young Christian. I thought that I could run my life way better than God. I had a much better idea of how things should go for me. Because after all, it was my life, right? I loved the Lord. I loved Jesus. You know, I knew that God had a plan for me. And I knew that the Holy Spirit was with me to guide me. But I didn't always listen to it. Sometimes I'd hear the whisperings and I'd be like, well, I know that that's what I should really do, but I, I kind of want to try this. Let's see how this goes. Mm -hmm. Well, there's also verses for this part. Uh, if you look at Deuteronomy 28.2, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. That's pretty finite. I mean, it, it tells you what you're supposed to do. So my life kind of became a mess. I was trying to make my own thing happen. I had a failed marriage, a failed business. I wasn't leading the life I was supposed to lead as a Christian. I knew what I was supposed to do, but I kept thinking that I could make things work. Things got so bad that one day I was driving in my car and I just pulled over and stopped driving. And I said, Lord, I have made a mess, such a mess. I've disappointed the people who love me. I've disappointed you. I'm unhappy. Everything is falling apart. I can't fix this. I can't do it anymore. Please help me. I know I don't deserve it. But you've made us promises as Christians when we come to you. You take us under your wing and you can bring us to where you need us to be. Amen. Now, it's not without some pain. Because <laughs> <laughs> we all have a perfect path through the Lord. And when we go in an opposite direction, he's got to fix things to try to bring us back to where we're supposed to be. And he has to tear down our mess in order to bring us back to where we should be. I lost my business. I ended up divorced, and that was something I never wanted to be. And at the time when everything was happening, it was scary. It was painful. But I said to God, I'm like, I told you to help me and straighten my life out to what you needed it to be. So I'm just going to hang on and enjoy the ride. And that's what I did. And if you look at Proverbs 16.3, that also tells us that we have to be committed to what God is doing in our lives. And that verse is commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. So once I committed my life to him again, I always loved him. I always believed in him. I, that was never the, the case, that that wasn't so. But I wasn't committed to him, and I wasn't listening to his word and what, how to apply it to my life. So once I started doing that again, he, today I have the best job I could ever want. I have a loving Christian husband Amen. who is good. I have a church that's fantastic, and I'm living a life that is pleasing to God instead of doing my own thing. But it takes that commitment, and it takes that rededicating yourself. Um, when you live your Christian life, and you commit to God's plan, you also have to remember to give God the glory. Because a lot of times things get better, and we think, oh, great, yeah, now, now I'm doing the things right, everything's going well. We can't forget 
God took us out of our mess Amen. and brought us back to his plan. And we have to give him the glory for that because it wasn't by my doing. This was all God. Amen. <laughs> I didn't even know the gentleman who's my husband now. I ended up meeting him through a friend that he went to high school with. And God brought that all together because for the longest time, she and I hadn't talked. And then all of a sudden, she and I started talking. And then he started talking to me. So God finds a way to take that perfect path where we went this way. And he brings us right back to where we're supposed Amen. to go. And if we are committed to him and believe in him what he will bring us to is going to amaze you because he knows what's best for us and we can't even possibly picture what our lives are meant to be he has the perfect plan and what he wants us to accomplish is far beyond what we ever thought we could have accomplished on our own um we also have to trust in the lord fully we have to know that he has our best interests at heart. It's like parents. When you tell your children, don't do this, try to do this, it's not because you don't want them to have any fun or you don't care about them having a good life. It's just the opposite. You know if they take this path, this path could lead to ruin. And you want to make sure that you give them the counsel to tell them that. It's the same way with God and the Holy Spirit. That's where they're trying to keep us on that path that they know is going to be good for us. Um, Deuteronomy 28.13 is a verse that I thought was very interesting. Um, bear with me just a moment here. <clears throat> and the Lord will make you the head and not the tail, and you shall only go up and not down. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, being careful to do them. That tells me that if we do what God has as our best interest, we'll always be the head. We won't be at the tail. We will always be up. We won't go down. He makes sure that our lives are... Now, it doesn't mean that we're going to live in a you know mansion down here with gold fixtures in our bathroom and things of that nature. But everything we need to make us happy and make us feel whole will be given to us. Now, for those of you that are lucky enough to be in a Christian life and happy and have a mansion with gold fixtures, more power to you because <laughs> you've done something right. But it's not meant for everyone. Uh, my husband and I are very simple people. We love experiences and people as opposed to things. And that is where the Lord blesses us. He brings more and more to that to us all the time. We've also started doing a ministry. Um, together we are doing the teaching for the International Schools of Ministry and we have our last trimester that we're having done. And God has blessed us with that. We didn't know how we were going to be able to do it and get through it. I had a job where my hours were crazy. It seemed like nothing was going to work together. And God changed all that because we committed ourselves to doing what he wanted us to do. He opened all the doors. He gave me a job where I have the time. It, 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 it's amazing what he'll do if you just trust him and you keep looking up. Um, another verse that I'd like to share is Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. We have to hold on to that, even when times are difficult. Sometimes when the clouds set in and the storm is going, it's really, really hard to look at these verses and say, no, I know you have something great for me because you're stuck in the moment. A lot of times we're stuck in the moment when things go difficult. We have mm -hmm. to keep looking to the Lord, keep trusting in him and knowing that Amen. he's gonna take us out to the other side of that storm. Sorrow's only for a short time, folks. And then the joy comes later. The other one I wanted to share is Deuteronomy 28, 3, 6. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb, and the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your herds, and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. 
Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. Amen. Something struck me about this verse when I read it that I'd never noticed before as well. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. When we come into the world, we are blessed because he has loved us and chosen us. When we go out to our Heavenly Father, we'll also be blessed. And we have to remember that it's not just about what happens down here, but at the start and at the ending. Amen. And I hold on to that every day. Amen. <clears throat> when things go wrong, it's just as important for us to understand that God is there for us. And it can be difficult, but it doesn't have to be. When the Lord blesses us, he tries to make it so that we cling to him in his blessings. But when things are hard, think about when life is going well as opposed to when life is going poorly. I found that in those times when my life was falling apart and I chose to look to him for help and understand his life for me, I got closer to him so much closer. I am closer to the Lord today than I've ever been my entire life. And this is from a girl that was in a Christian home and went to a Christian school. And I'm closer to him today. Amen. Which amazes me because I didn't, I didn't think that was possible back then. I thought, you know, yeah, I'm doing all the right stuff. I'm in the school and everything. But my heart was there, but my commitment wasn't there. Mm -hmm. I was going through the motions. Today, the commitment is there. And he is blessing us beyond anything we could have thought of. And it's there for all of us. We just have to hold on to it. And even when the storms come, know that sometimes the storms are meant to take us in a different direction to where things are going to be better. So we just have to hang on, hang on for the ride and get to the other side. Um, I have a song that I wanted to share with you today that the Lord put on my heart that kind of says everything in my testimony in one song. So I would like to share that with you next.
God bless you all in the good times and the bad. Amen. 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 So I think we could probably all just go home now. <laughs> you know what? She did share probably about 80% of the message already this morning. <laughs> including the scripture reference. <laughs> but Deuteronomy chapter 28. Just reading for you briefly verses 1 through 8. And I will try to avoid um, giving you repetitive details so what was originally about a 30 minute message is probably going to be a 10 minute message literally this morning um, but starting at verse 1 now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord that's a good part to remember because it means everything else after this is tied to this yes right. if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today that the Lord your God will set you high above the nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. What blessings? I'm glad you asked. Oh. They're listed starting at verse 3. <laughs> blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. I think we heard that. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. Amen. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord will be giving you you but again back to the if if you diligently obey the voice of the lord your god let's pray lord god as we look at this segment of scripture this morning and yet just a little more detail god would you reveal to us as we have already heard about this morning the blessings that have already been bestowed upon us as your children but lord god the blessings that you yet desire to bestow and God would you give us eyes to see when those blessings come and how those blessings come and why those blessings come in Jesus name amen, amen. we are a blessed people amen it doesn't take rocket science to realize that if you even live in the United States of America that you are you know our our poorest 1% is richer than 90% of the world's population. We are a blessed people just from that standpoint. But how much greater is the blessings that we have as the children of God? The blessings that are not hemmed in by the things of this world, by you know material possessions as we've already heard about, the blessings that we have of being able to be together, the blessings that we have of relationship with brothers and sisters in Christ, the relationship most of all that we have with God himself. A relationship we don't deserve to have. So true. But because of his grace, he chose to give us through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we truly are blessed. And why are we blessed? We're blessed because of our belief in God. We're blessed because of our desire to be obedient to him. God has promised. His love is unconditional. Is that not true? Yes. You know, his love is available to anybody that will simply call on him, even if you're not walking with God right now. His blessing of love is there for you if you simply reach out and grab it. But how many know there's a lot of other blessings that are very conditional? His love is unconditional, but a lot of his blessings are very conditional. In fact, even the blessing of salvation, as unconditional of a sign of his love that that is, it is still conditional. It's conditional on whether you choose to accept it or not. There's a lot of lies being preached out there, and I've heard it. Um, and I've, I've heard comments even from Harold, who's heard it more times than one could even count, of, P, of pastors even that get up at funeral services and begin to tell people, well, your loved one's going to be in heaven. doesn't matter what they did here. <clears throat> you know, God's love is unconditional, but if you want to have the blessing of being with him for eternity, it is conditional on whether or not you choose to accept him. And that... 
is a free gift. All we got to do is ask for it. He promises to give it. Amen? Mm -hmm. So we are blessed because what comes with that package? Relationship with the Almighty God, the maker of heaven, the maker of earth, the maker of everything that is and ever will be, the one who is the first and last, the beginning and the end, the one who knows no end, the one who has reigned victorious over Satan and the grave. We have relationship with him. And we have his promised love as his dearly loved children. No, even if that's the only blessing we have, that is enough. Yes, it is. Isn't it? But the great thing is we serve a God that doesn't stop there. He doesn't just bless us because of our belief. He blesses us beyond belief. Okay? The blessings start when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And from there, it stretches beyond. We've already heard, Sonia did a great job sharing with us this morning about herself being brought up in a church, being brought up in a Christian school, thinking, hey, I'm there. But how much more she has learned, how much closer she can get and has gotten as she has continued to walk out that salvation on a day-by-day -day basis. Messing up just like the rest of us from time to time and will again, I'm sure, you know, just like I will. But God's blessed us beyond the day we chose to believe in him. And it's not just that his blessing was beyond belief from that standpoint. His blessing is beyond belief in the fact that it's beyond our wildest imagination. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 says this, Eye is not seen, nor ear heard, nor has even entered into the heart of man. Now I can handle that no eye is seen, no ear is heard that hasn't even entered into the heart of a single individual over all of these years, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. That's so true. And you know what? I, I held firmly to the belief for a long time that, okay, so I can't wait to get to heaven to see that. But you know what? You don't have to wait. He didn't say, he didn't say it was just in reference to what's going to come when we die. It is. It's the things he's prepared for us today. If we choose to live in accordance with the way he wants us to live, those blessings can begin to be experienced now. There's blessings he pre he's prepared for you today. There's blessings he prepared for you already for next week. He's just waiting for next week to come to give them to you. Amen. <laughs> okay? So now you want, yeah, now I know a lot of us, we want next week's blessings no. tomorrow. <laughs> but it's coming in his due time if we seek him. Right? That's the key. God, we have to seek it. we got to keep wanting to get closer. Don't ever think that you finally arrived. Because the minute you do, you begin to shut down the blessing. <laughs> yep. Amen. Keep pressing in. He wants to bless you beyond your wildest dreams. <laughs> he wants to bless you beyond belief. And I'm not preaching a prosperity gospel here. But your God knows more of what you have need of than you do. Amen. And he knows what's best for you Amen. more than you do. Yes. Amen. Amen. But now here's a problem. Some people don't believe that they are blessed. Some Christians are walking around feeling that they're not blessed, or at least not blessed in the way that they think they should be. <laughs> yeah. Somehow, they're missing it. My Bible says, in fact, we heard it this morning <laughs> out of Jeremiah. I know the plans I have for you. Other versions say, I know the thoughts I've had towards you. Thoughts to prosper you, not to harm you. Amen. Plans to give you a future and a hope. Yes. Well, if that's true, and I'm not seeing the blessings, are they not there? Is the fault on him? No. Or is it on me? Somehow. Yeah. You see, I think the problem is that a lot of times we miss the blessings because we measure the blessings the wrong way. Mm. We measure our blessings by our happiness meter. Mm, sure. okay. If I'm happy, if I feel good, then therefore I'm blessed. <laughs> I'm blessed. It be alive. And that act actually is not true. Sometimes if you're happy, you might be robbing yourself of a blessing. <laughs> Sometimes it lines up. But, but blessings and happiness do not coexist definitively every time. The concept of being blessed, when you look at the Beatitudes, remember those in Matthew chapter 5, the Sermon on the Mount? Mm -hmm. Blessed are ye, for you shall be, right? Yep. Fill in the blanks, right? Numerous verses. We're going to share those here at the very end. 
But what does that word mean? It means satisfied are you. Fulfilled are you. Not happy are you. That's right. And some translations blessed. have done a little disservice by translating the word blessed into the word happy. Mm. It does not necessarily mean happy. It means you're satisfied. It means you feel anchored. It means that there's a sense of completeness in it. So if you're wondering if you're blessed or not, do not look at how happy you are as a measure for that blessing. How secure are you? How anchored are you? How steadfast are you? How satisfied are you? See, some people think blessing is cheesecake with cherries on top. Amen, hallelujah. Ooh, right? <laughs> Thank you, double cheeseburger. <laughs> but sometimes, I may know, that can prove to not be such a blessing in the end. <laughs> okay? Sometimes the real blessing is the broccoli and the cauliflower and the spinach. Right? We don't see it that way. Right? Our parents sure did because they told us, eat them, you'll be much healthier and happier, right? Because of it. Tofu. And... If you live on a diet of nothing but cheesecake, I'll guarantee you in a matter of moments, you will not be feeling so good, okay? You feel good in the moment. You might feel blessed in the moment, but are you really? And I think lots of times it's that way in the Christian life. Sometimes we want to measure blessing by how happy I am. Am I having my spiritual cheesecake right now? And maybe God's wanting to give you the cauliflower and the broccoli and the spinach right now because he knows the greater benefits that come down the world because of that. Amen? Lots of times, we're simply overlooking, as, we, as, she, as Sonia sung about, the blessings in disguise. Sometimes, and this, this can rock some people's boats, and I know we've had conversations with some of you about this. Sometimes an ailment or an injury can be a blessing from God. Amen. It can be a blessing in disguise because of avenues yeah, that it's opening up. Yeah. And some of you have given testimony to me of that. <laughs> and you know that that's the case. And I will not look at you because you know who I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm looking all over. But, but the truth is that lots of times blessings do come in packages that we don't expect. Sometimes it can be a heartache. Sometimes it can be a difficulty. One of the greatest blessings that I ever experienced in my life required me to go through two and a half years of turmoil in high school, of persecution. But because of that, I know that there was a woman who was saved from hanging herself on a tree at college. When I went through it, did it feel like a blessing? Absolutely not. But you know what? Once I learned about that situation and the impact that story had on this individual and how it that didn't only keep her from doing herself in, it actually caused her to seek God and actually draw closer to Him. Amen. I'd go through that two and a half years for 10 years, for 20 years, if I knew it would do that again. It's one of the most blessed moments I have in my life now is the one that actually had some of the greatest pain in my life. How about you? Because, yeah, I think a lot of times we measure our blessings in temporal terminology. We, we, we look at whether or not something's a blessing by how it makes me feel today. Or how it might make me feel for the next number of years. Or how it might make me feel during my, my years of retirement. But the truth is, those things will all pass. You know, you didn't come in with anything and you're not leaving with anything either. So true. The old saying goes, I haven't seen a U-Haul, right, towed by a hearse. Um, you know, you're not going to be taking your wealth with you. I might do that just because. But what you will take with you is the investments that you make in the hearts and the lives of people. That'd be funny. The way that you live your life for God. As I said, the only eternal things in this life are God, angels, and his word. And how we're investing in those three things will ultimately determine our true blessings that will last once all this is gone. Not just your life. This universe, God, Scripture tells us, is going to get rolled up like a scroll someday. Gone. Nothing is going to exist as you know it. That's right. Neither, neither what about I. the spiritual things? Those will last forever. So begin to look at your life through God's eyes. You've been blessed. And there's some keys to that blessing. One of the first keys to being blessed is bless God. 
Bless God. Tells us that in Numbers 24, 9. Who shall stir him up? Blessed is he that blesses thee, and cursed is he that curseth thee. Right? Bless God. Live your life in a way that blesses and pleases him. Because when that happens, blessings are returned back. Don't live in your mess if you want to be blessed. Don't continue thinking that your sin somehow or another is going to bring you all kinds of happiness and blessing. It's not. And we all have those things. We all have those pet sins. We, you know, there's a reason they're, temp that they're called temptations because they're tempting. And there's a reason that they're tempting. There's it's something fun. I gain from it. There's something that it strokes in me that brings some sort of pleasure. But the truth is, in the end, it won't bless you won't bring blessing. You want to have great blessing? Leave your transgressions at the cross. Leave your sins there. Let God fill the gap that you're trying to fill with your sin. Because usually the reason we turn to certain sins is because somehow we're getting, we gain strength from that. Or we think we do. But it's a false strength. What God wants you to do is simply lean on Him and lean not on your own understanding. Right? Begin to follow Him in everything that you do. Don't keep turning to your pet things. And by those things, I mean anything that's going to choose to take place of God. God wants to be the only one that you ever lean on. He wants to be your source of strength. He wants to be your source of trust. He wants to be your source of hope. Anything else that you turn to becomes sin in your life. It may not normally be even a sinful thing. But if it's, if it's replacing God, it becomes sin. Get rid of that. And let God fill that for you. Mm -hmm. And yes, I'm not just talking to non Christian, I'm talking to the Christian too. Let God fill every void. Yes. Yeah. If you really want to be blessed though, you've got to trust. You've got to be willing to trust God. And that means trusting Him not just when it makes sense. It's trusting Him even when it's hard. It's trusting Him when it's difficult. Trusting Him when sometimes it might even bring a little bit of pain or a little bit of disapproval from some other people. But are you willing to trust Him? Psalm chapter 2, verse 12 tells us, Blessed are all they that put their trust in God. And Psalm 40, Blessed is the man that makes the Lord his trust and respects not the proud, Jeremiah 17, 77. Blesses the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Okay? So it's not just trusting in Him, it's also placing your hope in Him. See, what helps us <coughs> trust is making sure that the hope is where it's supposed to be. Because if our hope is in the Lord and we're hoping and believing that He is going to be able to bring us through, then we can trust Him as we have to walk through the hard areas walk the difficult miles. You want to have his blessing, you got to trust him. Amen. Only he knows the way to the ultimate blessing for your life. Yes, Lord. Will you let him lead the way? And will you let him color what that blessing looks like? And blessing comes from never growing relationship with God. Psalm 84 tells us this, blessed are they that dwell in your house they will be singing praises to thee. Now that's just not talk about that. Okay, we all need to pack up shop and y'all need to move into life on Maine. Number one, we don't have that many bedrooms here. Okay? <laughs> so that's not going to work. That is not what he's talking about. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Now here's the, here's the ironic thing about that. What is his house? My heart. You are. <laughs> he lives in you, but you got to dwell in him. Right. Now, when you figure that out, you let me know, okay? <laughs> I don't know if I fully kind of get that picture. Turn inside out. <laughs> but this much I do know, that when he talks about blessed are those that dwell in your house, what is that referring to? It means you're in some level of deep relationship with that individual. Do you just let anybody stay in your house? No. Probably not. Unless you're a Carol last week, <laughs> who was a great blessing to us in housing uh, some of our musicians. Um, but talking about dwelling in somebody's house, it's not visiting. This is living with. 
day in, day out. Mm-hmm. Now, how many know when you're living with somebody, you see them at their worst? You see them, ladies, without curlers in their hair. Okay? <laughs> or whatever the case is. God sees you. When you're willing to let him dwell in your house and you're dwelling in his house, he's going to get to see every part of you. The good, the bad, and the ugly. As you should. But here's the great thing. There's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus, yeah, Romans right. chapter 8. Amen. Let him live there. And if he tells you, hey, love you, man. But you know what? No There's a closet over here <laughs> that stinketh. <laughs> you need to deal with it. You know? Exactly. Let, let him do that. Let him bless you. Your house will come out smelling like it never has before. Psalm chapter 65. Blesses the man whom you choose and cause to approach you, that he may dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house. It's a promise. It's a promise that if you dwell with God, if you're willing to walk, not just on Sundays from about 10 when we start the fellowship time until noonish, but I'm talking every other hour of the week. When you're willing to walk with him, there's great satisfaction that comes in that. And then lean on him continually. If you choose to lean on his strength and not your own, you will experience blessings you have never imagined. Because when you lean on yourself, you know what you can and cannot do. With God, nothing is impossible. Amen? So anything he calls you to do, any place he calls you to go, you will be able to go. And where he's leading is into a Canaan land. It's into a land of promise. Go with fear and reverence with him into those places. Understand that this God that you serve loves you beyond your wildest imagination. He is the lover of your soul, but he also wants to be the Lord of your life. He is the lover of your soul, but he wants to be the Lord of your life. Yes, I am a friend of God, as some of the songs have sung, but also understand, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. (laughs) You know, you are holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Amen? Amen. Amen. Walk in reverence. Walk in a reverent fear, but also walk in his love. Okay, And as we choose to do that, we will be able to experience those blessings he wants to bring. Mentioned at the beginning, Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 through 9, from the Beatitudes. What were some of the promises that he gave us as far as how we'll be blessed? Well, blessings come through a number of different things. I encourage you to search them out because that's a whole sermon in and of itself. But it says there that the poor in spirit will be blessed. That's obviously talking spiritually, right? Doesn't mean you have to be broke. Okay, but when you come spiritually poor, you realize you are nothing without him. What do you promise? The blessing that yours is the kingdom of heaven. In other words, the Lord of the universe is Lord of your life and now has the power to apply his power and authority in the things in your life. So even the obstacles that you will come across, his power and his authority has dominion over that. Amen. There's Amen. great blessing in that. You know? In that. And he also said that Comfort will be ours. Comfort is a blessing that we can tap into. He also gives us the, the promise that another blessing will have is that we'll inherit the earth. He also says that we will be filled. And that is an awesome thing. Again, not talking physically. It's talking spiritually. Very, very, very. A lot of people turning to everything under the sun to try to find fulfillment. But it can only be found in Jesus Christ. Then when we find it in Him... He promises he will fill us. How does that come? By hungering and thirsting after righteousness. Wanting to live according to his principles. Wanting to live according to his statutes. Letting him live his life in and through you. He also promises mercy and grace to us. Mercy is what? Mercy is not getting what you deserve. Grace is getting what you don't deserve. That's right. And God has promised both of those to those who will choose to worship him and and follow after him. There's incredible blessing in that. I'm glad he doesn't give me what I deserve. Amen. And really glad he has given me what I don't deserve through his son. We'll also be called sons of God. Incredible blessing to be considered his child. You know, 
How many of you are willing to lay your life on your line for your kids? And if you love your kids that way, how much more does God love you? In fact, he did lay his life on the line for you. But he does it every day. But probably the greatest blessing was found in verse 8. When he said, blessed are the pure in heart. Why? They're going to see God. We're going to get to see him face to face. No Amen. longer just talking about him. No longer worshiping him. We know he shows up and his Holy Spirit ministers to our heart. But to literally be able to see him face to face, just like I'm looking at Lance right now, Amen. or Dottie, or my wife, or, or Sonia, or John, or any of the rest of you. Seeing God this real and this vivid, you have that promise. If you choose just to follow him. And you know what? My Bible also tells me that when that happens, nothing's going to matter. You know, there will be such joy, there will be such love, and everything will just melt away. And he's going to wipe away every tear from our eyes. Amen. Every pain, every heartache, every sorrow that we experience on this earth that you think rips you up, rips him up ten times worse than it rips you. How many of you feel it, that their parents have seen your kids go down a bad path? You've seen them get hurt. How much does it tear you apart? Again, God loves you infinitely more. So how much more is what you're going through today in this, in this world that we live ripping God apart? And he can't wait for the day when you stand before him, when he can come to you and say, come here. In the words that Lance used earlier, let me hug you. And just feel everything just, <gasps> just fall away. No greater blessing. World can't offer any of that stuff. How many have searched for it and came up empty? Yep. Both hands for that one for me. <laughs> but in God, has it always been easy? No. no. Has it always been a bowl of cherries? Absolutely no. not. In fact, sometimes I would say it's gotten harder when you choose to follow Christ because now you've got a big bullseye on your back. And there's an enemy that's going to be out to get you. But here's the great thing. Your God loves you. Amen. And it alone. He promises, I will never leave you or forsake you. Why does he say that? And it's true. Because Jesus himself experienced firsthand what it really means to be forsaken by That's God. Right. And he doesn't want that for any of us. And his promise, it will not happen. I will be there with you through everything. What a great joy we have in that. To know that when hard times come, our God is with us. Greatest blessing ever. I'd rather go through the hardest of times with God than the greatest of times without Him. How about you? So let us learn to open up our eyes to the blessings that God has before us. Don't overlook them. Understand sometimes they're going to come in a package you don't, you're don't, you not used to. It comes as a blessing in disguise. But receive it however God wants to give it, knowing that the God that's giving it loves you more than you could ever imagine. Amen. Lord God, we thank you today. Ask that you would... Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, to, to not miss those moments or the blessings that you send our way, but to receive them with open arms, knowing they come from a loving and faithful God. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.